And joining us this evening from London, Dr. Carol Sparry, and who's the Assistant Professor and Deputy Director of Asia Research Institute at the University of Nottingham. And from Bengaluru, Senior Journalist K.S. Dakshinamurthy. Good evening to both of you. Mr. Dakshinamurthy, let me start with you, sir. It's the yeah. biggest phase in this election, 95 seats, 17 percent of the voting population. Will this be the decider? Well, um, yeah, in a, in, a, in a sense, you know, it's a, 95 seats is a huge chunk and it is really spread across the uh, country in uh, very crucial uh, um, areas. So it can be, you know, one can even call it a representative sample, you know, so to speak. So um, how, we, uh, how we, uh, India votes in this phase uh, probably will largely determine how the rest of the elections will go. But then, of course, at the end of it, we can't really uh, say much because the counting will happen simultaneously. But yes, you know, um, you know, the kind of tempo, the, the you know, the kind of uh, issues and the way the voting pattern has happened probably is uh, an indicator of uh, things to come in the next five phase. Dr. Spari, who according to you is running a better campaign? Running a better campaign? Well, that's a good question. Um, well, I think, for example, in the South, you mentioned Tamil Nadu being a new sort of challenge. Um, and I think that's that's a really interesting one to watch because, you know, they're, they're um, passing away of the two very big leaders. So it's really a test to see um, you know, for the battleground of um, Tamil politics in particular. Um, in terms of who's running the better campaign, I mean, considering the number of parties and the number of leaders that are involved, um, in this uh, in this particular phase, you know, you mentioned NCP, INC, uh, Congress, uh, BJP, Shiv Sena, West Bengal, Mamata Banerjee, and the, the the combination there with the Congress and the left, but also the BJP. Uh, and Navin Patnaik's party in uh, Arisha as well. So there's so many different parties and, and leaders in the fray. I'd be reluctant to say who I think is winning um, in terms of, you know, capturing hearts and minds. Um, but I think it's, uh, again, we've got a long way to go still. Uh, we've got another sort of five phases to go. So I think it would be a little bit premature to, to say who I think is winning. Um, but, you know, the manifestos are out there. Um, some of the candidates have not yet been uh, declared for the for the, some of the final phases. Um, so I think we still have a long way to go to really make a, a concrete um, concrete sort of statement on that. Fair enough. You won't, don't want to hedge your bets just yet. Uh, Mrs. Dakshina Murthy, in 2014, we, uh, Jayalalitha won 37 seats, and yet she had no say in government formation at the centre because the BJP did extremely well. This time it may not be the case. Who do you think is, is winning Tamil Nadu, considering the voting pattern that we just discussed? The state gives all the seats to one party or one combined. Um, let's look at um, ADMK. You know, um, it has been, uh, you know, there have been a lot of drawbacks which the party has faced. Uh, one is uh, Jalalta um, died, and then uh, the party is split. Uh, you know, there has been a lot of internal dissensions. You have Dinakaran coming out as a, a separate faction. Plus, you have the you know, issue of anti incumbency. So, and then, you know, there is also no, there is no clear cut successor to uh, Jalalta. So, this is as far as the ADMK is concerned. If you take the DMK, the DMK has been far more organized. You know, the party is still in good shape. Yes, there have been some problems between the brothers, uh, RGV and uh, uh, MK Stalin. But that apart, uh, the party has remained one. And then, and since um, it's been out of power in the last five years at least, so it's got a, you know, it's got a lot of advantages. And um, I think it's, uh, it will definitely hope to uh, use this um, opportunity. And I think uh, from all the reports that I've um, come across in the last, say, about a couple of months or so. And even earlier, I think the DMK stands a very good chance. I mean, the DMK and, the, and its allies. Right. Uh, Dr. Spari, if you followed uh, what the BJP has been trying to do, every election we ask, will the lotus bloom in the south? Now, this time they worked very hard. They created a lot of buzz in Kerala with the Shabri Mala protests. They tried something in Tamil Nadu as well. But their realistic hope still remains only Karnataka. Why is it that the BJP is still being seen as a distant third or fourth contender in Tamil Nadu, even at a time when the Dravidian parties are at their lowest? Well, I think uh, Tamil politics has always been known for a kind of really strong regional identity, a really strong um, kind of pushback against um, sort of uh, central sort of um, interference in the state, um, but also, uh, you know, that kind of sense of central interference at least, but also a very particularly strong regional identity um, and a, a very proud history as well, a proud sort of ethno-linguistic um, history of, uh, of identity. So I think um, in terms of trying to, uh, I mean, 
ever since, really since the 60s, but particularly since the 80s, these two main parties of the ADMK and the DMK have really been um, kind of really strong uh, parties in this state, um, kind of going back and forth, governments going back and forth against each other. I mean, the other thing to note is that it's not too long away from the Assembly elections as well. So I think... Um, I agree with the, the other guest on your show that suggested that essentially this will give whoever makes kind of a headway in this will give um, them some kind of um, encouragement for the next assembly elections. And I think the BJP um, is is struggling in the South, partly because of the history and the strength of those two parties to really kind of hang on to um, sort of Tamil culture, Tamil identity uh, and, appeal to, uh, and appeal to those sentiments as well. Mr. Dakshina Murthy, will this then be an election about the regional players? You have KCR in Telangana, YSR in Andhra, the Dravidian parties uh, in Tamil Nadu and the likes of Naveen Patnaik in Odisha. They are going to be the kingmakers. These are, um, uh, you know, uh, mark my words, these are going to be really, really big elections for the regional parties. And if the regional parties, you know, uh, get together, form a coalition with uh, the help of either the BJP or the Congress, depending on how, what happens post uh, May 23rd, I think it's going to open a new chapter in um, uh, Indian politics. Yes, there have been coalitions in the past. The uh, regional parties have been there for a very long time, but not in this, in, with this kind of a spread, because the uh, regional parties are seriously strong. For instance, in Telangana and uh, in Andhra, there is just no space for the Congress or the BJP. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's amazing. You know, and if you look at um, Tamil Nadu, uh, you know, one is looking at the BJP desperately trying to get a foothold. But then, you know, the point here is, what is it that the BJP is offering Tamil Nadu, which uh, is not being offered by either the ADMK or the DMK? So, you know, there's nothing new that the BJP is really offering. So they're basically riding piggyback on the ADMK. You take um, uh, Kerala, you know, Kerala, you have the um, UDF and the uh, LDF and... And, you know, they are, you know, in, in many ways, in the, it's a kind of a regional uh, battle that they fight. Yes, the, you know, uh, UDF is, a, you know, is basically Congress-led. And then you have the LDF led by the CPM. But, you know, still there is a, there is a very insulating uh, element in Kerala. So for the BJP to break into that, again, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. They've tried it with Sabri Mala, but we just have to wait and see whether it's uh, worked. Indeed, and as we said in the past, uh, Congress bashing doesn't work in a state where the Congress isn't a strong player. I want to come to Bengal, uh, Dr. Spari, and uh, Bengal is deeply divided. The campaign has been very high decibel, and it's become a Modi versus Mamata battle. The left has been relegated to the third spot. Do you see the BJP making significant gains here? Well, um, that's an interesting question because I'm wondering whether actually not necessarily significant gains in terms of seats, but whether it is actually going to, um, you know, it's kind of trying to edge into um, West Bengal, trying to capture that. Uh, I mean, West Bengal has seen a lot of um, kind of uh, disruption over the last few years with the kind of decline of the left and the rise of Mansa Banerjee's party, the Trinamool. Um, and what's interesting is, you know, some of the sort of pushing back that Mansa Banerjee's been doing and a lot of that that pushing back has been directed towards the BJP. Um, so in a sense, uh, there, is, there is a sense that Mansa Banerjee has made this, uh, you know, in some senses, has made this about sort of trying to defend West Bengal against um, the kind of growth of the BJP. Um, but of course, there is still the Congress left um, combine. I know that they, um, Mamta Banerjee didn't want to um, go in, into an alliance with the Congress in this election. So I think that will be an interesting one to watch. Um, I, th I would like to think that um, Mamta Banerjee will manage to kind of keep, even though there is this anti-incumbency factor, but of course, historically, West Bengal hasn't had as high anti-incumbency as a number of other states, right? She had a, a long-term um, uh, left government in the state. So um, that was an interesting one to watch to see how the BJP will do, particularly in terms of vote share, not necessarily in terms of seats, perhaps. Right. Doc, uh, Mr. Dakshina Murthy, this also seems to be a race for the Hindi vote, uh, the, the Hindu vote, rather. Uh, both sides, you have Rahul Gandhi going to temples, Priyanka Gandhi going to temples, Amit Shah going to temples. At a time like this, the induction of Sadhvi Pragya Thakur, how will it impact this election, according to you? Um, it's just, uh, you know, there is already a, a deep... Uh, 
polarization that we have seen you know the fact that today we are talking uh, of voters you know in terms of uh, hindu voters and muslim voters and all that of course it's always been there i mean no denying it but it has acquired a, a, a sharper edge in in these elections for instance you know when rahul gandhi uh, contested from wayanad the prime minister said that he was going there for the minority votes and you know things like that so um, in this context so what is happening is that there is a sharpening of this um, dichotomy or the polarization in the you know in the as far as the religious uh, setup is concerned so yeah. sadhvi pragya yeah. is a controversial figure and you know she was accused in you know all those uh, um blast uh, cases and all that but the point here is that her entering will be something like what happened when yogi adityanath was made the chief minister of uttar pradesh completely um, surprising everyone so in a sense you know it caters to a certain hard uh, a hardline rigid um, uh, sections of uh, you know the pro hindutva um, elements in, um, in indian society so it could further polarize the situation that's how i see it right so, it, it, this is disruptive politics dr spari this is an election spread over a month in the hot indian summer and every day you have politicians of all hues making the same strong shrill pitches uh, there is an element of voter fatigue as well i believe do you, do you, do you think that the decisions that are taken now or henceforth will still impact voter behavior or have people already made up their minds another really good question um i mean we saw very on early on in the campaign that there was a kind of um you know the, there was the appeal to national security with the palwam attack um and of course it is going to be up to parties to keep pushing their sort of message and their agenda throughout the the campaign and of course that takes uh, funds resources energy um all kinds of uh, of issues and of, of course some states are you know across seven phases um but as we see in the next phase, is um from 27 April there will be a number of states that are pretty much done um so they they those parties and those um candidates in those uh, states won't necessarily need to kind of um have the same sort of stamina to to go the full way but of course they might still be very, um campaigning for other candidates um in other states as well um so i think there's still a long way to go i think there's still issues that may come up um there's still some candidates that need to be um declared as well um and there's also um you know who knows what can happen in the next um sort of five uh, five phases or so I have to thank you there Dr. The, uh, Carol uh, Spari and uh, Mr. Dakshina Murthy uh, for a very engaging conversation your inputs were most insightful thanks very much for joining us here and that will be all on this show as well we're leaving you with the best moments from the second phase of polling thanks for watching